Greetings, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about gangs. Ah, oh, yes, I remember the first gang I was in. We called ourselves the JLAS, the Jennifer Lawrence Appreciation Society. I suppose we were more of a uh, fan club than a gang. We still had guns, though. Glue guns for making scrapbooks. Come to think of it, I was the only member, too. <laughs> Good times. But which criminal gang is anti-moustache? How did an elaborate chest tattoo get a gang member sent to the big house? And do you want to be in my gang, my gang, my g Oh, I probably shouldn't sing that. Whoops. Anyway, two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So grab your friends, flash some gang signs, and prepare for a bizarre and upsetting initiation into 101 facts about gangs. Number one. So let's start with the basics. What is a gang? In its broadest legal definition, a gang is an organized group of criminals. However, more detailed definitions frequently identify a number of common characteristics, such as dot dot dot. Number two. Former British Prime Minister David Cameron described gangs as territorial, hierarchical, and incredibly violent. He also explained that most gangs are composed of young boys, mainly from dysfunctional homes, which is a sweeping generalization, really. Thanks, David. Number three. A report published by the Centre of Social Justice also pointed out that gangs are often identifiable to others and associated with a particular territory. Not only that, they are often in conflict with other gangs too. Number four. Organisationally, gangs are often structured around race or ethnicity. Either that or a particular territory, sometimes known as a turf, or a simple desire to make large amounts of money through illegal activities. Number five. More philosophically, American sociologist Barrington Moore Jr. suggested that gangsterism is a form of self-help which victimizes others. He furthermore characterized European feudalism as gangsterism that had become society itself and acquired respectability and power. Wow, yeah, we're getting this heavy this quickly. Cheedy from the good place would love it. Number six. The word gang derived from the old English gan, meaning to go. It's also a linguistic cognate, yeah, I know words, with the old Norse word gangster, which means journey. Number seven. In 2011, the National Gang Intelligence Center of the FBI claimed that there are approximately 1.4 million active gang members in the United States. These people belong to over 33,000 American gangs. Number eight. In the same year, 2011, in case you forgot, approximately 230,000 American gang members were behind bars. Number nine. Traditionally, LA, Los Angeles, the city of angels, is considered to be the gang capital of America, with an estimated 120,000 active gang members residing in Los Angeles County. Number 10. However, according to the Chicago Crime Commission, it's actually the city of, you guessed it, Chicago, that has the highest number of gang members, that's a terrifying 150,000 members. Number 11. Today, most of the money made by gangs worldwide comes from the drugs trade. The United Nations estimate that criminal gangs generate over $315 billion a year through illegal drugs. Number 12. Many of the largest and most well-known organized gangs have existed for centuries. These include the Chinese Triads, the Japanese Yakuza, the American Old West Outlaw Gangs, and the Italian Mafia. Number 13. For instance, 17th century London, which is when your mum was born, was terrorized by a number of organized gangs known as the Mims, Bugles, Hectors, and Dead Boys. That last one just sounds like a boy band. Members often wore coloured ribbons to distinguish themselves from other groups, and these gangs would often come into conflict with one another. <gasps> Gasp shock horror. Number 14. Across the pond on the east coast of the US, gangs first began to form in the 1780s, following the American Revolution, as prior to that, everyone was a tad bitty fighting us British. That said, these groups were more like proto-gangs, made up of local youths vying for turf, rather than the highly organised and highly dangerous gangs that would appear later. Number 15. Some estimates suggest that in the 100 years between 1740 and 1840, Indian thuggy gangs murdered approximately 1 million people. It's from the thuggies that we get the English word thug. Number 16. During the Victorian era, the English city of Birmingham was home to a criminal gang known as the Peaky Blinders. The name Peaky Blinder has had somewhat of a resurgence as of late, owing to a certain historical fiction television series of the same name. Number 17. Members of the Peaky Blinders were known for their stylish uniform, which included tailored jackets, silk scarves, bell-bottom trousers, leather boots, and Peaks flat caps, which were the Peaky Blinders in question. You see, they know what they were doing. Number 18. The name Peaky Blinders is said to derive from the group's chill tactic of stitching razor blades into the peak of their caps, allowing them to be used as weapons. Members of the gang would grab their hats from the back and swing them down their victim's face, possibly blinding them. See, Peaky Blinders. Number 19. 
However, most experts now agree it's highly unlikely these gangsters ever used weaponized caps. Most likely because at the time, razor blades were very, very expensive. The name probably just came from the peaked hats that gangsters wore. The shame really takes away the mystique, doesn't it? But there we go, that's what we're for at one on one fact. Number 20. The English football club Manchester City was initially formed of young Mancunians as an alternative to gang warfare. Sadly though, English football would later turn into a hotbed for hooliganism anyway, so... Oh well, you win some, you lose some. Still, they won a competition recently, I hear, I think. So, well done, yay. Number 21. In the early 1900s, French gangsters were known to use a weapon called an Apache revolver. This happy little death device was a triple threat, combining a revolver, a knife, and brass knuckles into one. It's actually quite impressive when you think about it. Number 22. Ooh. The Depression-era gangster and notorious bank robber Charles Pretty Boy Floyd was well known for allegedly destroying mortgage records at the banks he robbed, freeing people from their debts. Unfortunately though, these acts have never been verified and could be mere myths. But it was true that Floyd was a popular figure known for sharing his ill-gotten gains, and as such acquired the nickname, the Robin Hood of the Cooks and Hills. Number 23. It's estimated that during the 1920s, Chicago was home to over 1,000 gangs. That is, and this is a fact, too many gangs, Chicago. Too many. Number 24. Early gangs engaged in various criminal activities, but in most cases were not involved in illicit drug trading. Because prior to the introduction of laws like the 1912 International Opium Convention, as well as the 1919 Volstead Act, drugs were actually fairly easy to obtain legally. As such, they couldn't really make any profit from it. Number 25. Gang involvement in drug trafficking increased massively during the 70s and 80s. People like Pablo Escobar became phenomenally wealthy from illegal trade. And by the early 90s, Escobar had amassed a personal fortune of $30 billion, which sounds low, but in today's money, that's $55 billion, making him one of the richest men in history. Number 26. In fact, Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel was making so much money in the 80s that they were spending $2,500 every month solely on rubber bands just to physically hold all the cash together. I'm so poor, I can't even afford an elastic band. Number 27. However, some gangs continue to have minimal involvement with drugs. Certain factions of the Japanese Yakuza, for example, specifically avoid drugs, though others are more than happy to get their grubby little hands on some sweet, sweet drugs. Number 28. The first American street gang arose in the late 1820s in New York City and were known as the 40 Thieves. The 40 Thieves have also been characterized as the first decisively dangerous gang in the whole of the US. Number 29. Incidentally, another criminal gang named the 40 Thieves sprang up around roughly the same time in London, England. And in case you were wondering, no, they had no connection to the New York gang. Great minds think alike, eh? Number 30. They were also known as the 40 Elephants, and were conspicuous as an all-female crime syndicate who specialised in the art of shoplifting. In fact, the 40 Elephants became notorious for their ability to avoid police detection. Number 31. Another early New York gang was a notorious band of Irish immigrants known as the Dead Rabbits, who were one of the most feared gangs to emerge in that era. The group got their name simply because they identified themselves by carrying a dead rabbit on a pike, and supposedly threw a dead rabbit on the ground before they began fighting. Where did they get so many dead rabbits from if they're in New York? Number 32. Probably the most well-known criminal gang in that they've been, you know, on all sorts of movies and taken the piss out of so many times it's surprising, is the Italian Mafia, which is also the most popular flavor of Mafia. According to the Telegraph newspaper, the Italian Mafia has cash reserves of over $120 billion, with some estimates putting that number at almost $250 billion. If it were a company, it would be one of the largest on Earth, which probably explains why so many people are scared of it. Number 33. One of the eight rules in the American Mafia is that you cannot have facial hair, which is a shame considering how naturally gifted Italians are with beard growth. It's a shame. Number 34. Gangster Frank Gusenberg was shot 14 times during the Valentine's Day Massacre, infamously orchestrated by everyone's favourite gangster Al Capone. As Gusenberg lay dying, police asked him who had shot him, to which he famously replied, Nobody shot me. This is because, as everyone knows, snitches get stitches. He died three hours later. Number 35. Speaking of Al Capone, in 1939, the legendary gangster donated two Japanese weeping cherry trees to the former Union Memorial Hospital. Why? Well, it was a nice thank you present for the excellent treatment and care he received while being treated for, of all things, syphilis. Though one of the trees was cut down to make room for an extension to the hospital, the other is still there and continues to blossom every spring. Number 36. We'd better be careful with all these lovely facts about Al Capone, otherwise we might start getting the impression that he wasn't a horrifically violent criminal. Anyway, despite that, one of the first soup kitchens for the unemployed during the Great Depression was set up by Capone himself. But remember, violent criminal. Number 37. 
In perhaps the most dedicated attempt to evade police capture, Mafia boss Vincent Gigante would wander around New York's Greenwich Village in his bathrobe and slippers, mumbling incoherently to himself, which he later admitted was an elaborate ruse to avoid prosecution by convincing everyone he was insane. If that isn't crazy enough, he kept up this act for almost 30 years. Number 38. In 1946, a man claiming to be a detective approached a pedestrian named Pearl Lusk in the Times Square subway station and gave her a camera, requesting that she snap a photo of a suspected jewel thief. The suspect turned out to be the detective's ex-wife, Olga Rocco. The detective turned out to be the gangster Alphonse Rocco, and the camera turned out to be a concealed shotgun which fired when Lusk pressed the shutter. Despite losing a leg in the attack, Olga Rocco survived, whereas her husband was later pursued by police and died in the resulting shootout. Number 39. In 1970, the Italian-American Civil Rights League was set up to challenge derogatory media depictions of Italians as mafia gangsters and criminals. Who founded this group? Well, only the head of the Columbia crime family, Joe Colombo, of course. Number 40. One of the Italian-American Civil Rights League's most high-profile disputes was with the production of the film The Godfather. Joe Colombo met with the producers of the film and convinced them to remove any and all mentions of the word mafia. Unbeknownst to Columbo, there was only ever going to be one instance of the word in the movie anyway. But still, it was taken away. So, good work, Joe, I think. Number 41. Fans of the iconic animated series The Simpsons, i.e. pretty much everybody on Earth, will know that Springfield's resident gangster goes by the name of Fat Tony. What you may not know is that Fat Tony was inspired by a real gangster, Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, who died aged 80, which is actually a fairly impressive age for a gangster, in the city of Springfield in Missouri. The meaning of life. The mafia crime drama The Sopranos was so accurate that mobsters, to whom the FBI was secretly listening with wiretaps, were heard discussing the show in a state of disbelief as to how it mirrored their lives almost exactly. Some of them even suspected that the show's producers actually had a mole on the inside. Which would have been, I mean, wow, that's probably the best researcher ever. Number 43. Not only is there an Italian mafia, a Russian mafia, a Bulgarian mafia, there's also a Jewish mafia that operated during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Jewish Mafia competed with other gangs and orchestrated the fixing of the 1919 World Series, a baseball tournament that non-Americans would instantly recognize as only involving America. Number 44. In 2007, the CIA released reports which revealed they had previously partnered with the Mafia to assassinate Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro died in 2016 at the ripe old age of 90, so clearly the CIA and the Mafia couldn't get it done. Number 45. Probably the most well-known criminal gang based on the nation of Japan are the Yakuza, who are known to operate internationally with an estimated membership of over 100,000. The name Yakuza comes from the Japanese card game Oicho Kabu, in which the worst hand you could possibly get is 893, pronounced in Japanese as Yakuza. Number 46. Interestingly, the Yakuza are able to operate fairly openly in Japan. The group have offices, often make charitable donations, and even have investments in many large mainstream companies. Number 47. Not only that, but when Eisenhower visited Japan in 1960, the government actually asked the Yakuza bosses to provide tens of thousands of their minions to act as security guards. Number 48. The Yakuza even offered help and assistance in the wake of the devastating Tohoku earthquake and tsunami that occurred in 2011. Yakuza factions dispatched over 70 trucks to areas that were harshly affected by the quake, as well as the resulting tsunami, loaded with supplies worth more than half a million dollars. Number 49. The Yakuza are known for their strict codes of conduct, and mistakes often incur severe consequences. Yubitsumi, which literally means finger shortening, is a fairly disturbing Yakuza ritual which involves members severing parts of one's fingers as either punishment or apology for various infractions. Traditionally, this practice was done to make it more difficult for offending individuals to wield a sword, making them much more dependent on their masters for protection. Number 50. This practice had some slightly unintended consequences for Japan, for people who couldn't have less to do with the Yakuza. Foreign cartoons, such as innocuous shows like Bob the Builder, had to be edited in Japan to include a fifth digit on all characters' hands. Western animations often depict characters with only four digits, which is immediately reminiscent of the Yakuza for Japanese viewers. Surely not the children though, right? Number 51. When the SNES or Super Famicom first launched in Japan, Nintendo was forced to distribute the consoles under cover of night so that the Yakuza didn't hijack the trucks carrying them. Somehow all the crime and finger reputations don't bother me, but this fact makes me really angry. How could you? Number 52. In 2011, the CEO of Olympus was fired when it was discovered that approximately $1.6 billion of the company's money had been paid to the Yakuza. Number 53. The Yakuza also sent to people who owed their money to do extremely hazardous cleanup work at Fukushima, where a nuclear power plant was damaged during the tsunami, causing huge amounts of environmental damage. Most of these people, who offer no debts over gambling and drugs, don't even have the proper training to carry out the job correctly. Number 54. 
It's estimated that the Triads, a transnational Chinese gang, smuggle approximately 100,000 people into the US every year. These undocumented workers are often then made to work for the Triads in order to pay off their debts. Number 55. It's heavily suspected that North Korea counterfeits American $100 bills as a method of funding its activities overseas. Known as super notes, owing to them being almost indistinguishable from real American money, these bills have been circulated with the help of the triads, and supposedly prompted the US government to redesign the $100 bill. Number 56. Hilariously, but also probably quite terrifyingly, Chinese triad members tried on several occasions to extort Michael Bay and his colleagues during the filming of Transformers 4. A number of people tried to disrupt the production of the film, doing a favour for cinema audiences everywhere. One individual even tried to slap Mr. Bay in the face, before he was wrestled to the ground by security. Number 57. One of the most infamous street gangs are the Crips, who are based largely in and around Los Angeles, and adopted the colour blue as their gang colour. The gang got their name from the tendency of early members to walk around with canes to display their pimp status, which backfired slightly as it prompted people to call them cripples. Which is really dangerous, you shouldn't call them cripples. Which was essentially shortened to Crips. Number 58. The infamous gang sign used by the Crips is performed by forming a C shape using your thumb and index finger, often with the three remaining fingers pointing up vertically. If you're watching this while you're out and about in the city of Los Angeles, do not replicate this now! Wait until you get home and crip it up to your heart's content, but don't do it outside. Number 59. Probably the most famous Crip is Snoop Dogg, who was associated with the Rolling Twenties, a large faction within the Crips. Other famous Crips include the rappers Nate Dogg and Easy Mother E. <laughs> Number 60. The Crips are also well known for their traditional rivalry with the Bloods, who occupy neighbouring areas of Los Angeles County and wear red. The long and bitter war between the Bloods and the Crips has claimed thousands of lives. Number 61. Like the Crips, the Bloods also have their own gang sign, which some say is more impressive than the Crips one, but not me. Not me. While the boys in blue utilize a simple C-shaped hand gesture, those clever fellas in the Bloods manage to figure out a way to spell the word blood with their fingers. Smart. Number 62. Like the Crips, the Bloods also have a number of famous members, or people who were, at the very least, associated with the gang. Such people include Lil Wayne, Immortal Technique, Wacker Flock of Flame, and The Game. Ha, you lost the game. Number 63. When they're not literally killing each other, Bloods and Crips have also developed a language to verbally attack each other with. Crips are known to refer to rival Bloods as slobs, and when Bloods want to insult Crips, they use the word crabs. Frankly, both of them are fairly insulting, but which do you think? Which insult is better, slob or crab? Let us know on our fancy YouTube poll. Nintendo 64. Sometimes, gangs arise simply as a means of protection. The Los Angeles gang, known as Mara Salvatrucha, commonly shortened to MS-13, was formed by refugees of the Civil War in El Salvador, who found themselves in a city populated by other Latino gangs that wanted nothing to do with them. As such, many Salvadoran immigrants felt they had no other choice than to form their own gang. Number 65. The origins of the name Mara Salvatrucha are disputed. One theory claims that Mara is named after La Mara, another gang from the Salvadoran city of San Salvador, as the word Mara is the Central American term for gang. The term Salvatruchas is shared by members of the Farabundo Marti National Liberation Front, a group of Salvadoran peasants trained as guerrilla fighters. Number 66. MS-13 is particularly notorious for their violence and brutality, which is summed up in the gang's motto, Mata Viola Controla, which means kill, rape, control. Very often gang members will use machetes to carry out attacks, partly because they are cheaper than guns, but often because they are more savage and result in more violent and brutal attacks. Number 67. The number 13 is said to refer to the 13th letter of the alphabet, M, which goes back to Mara. However, it's also theorized that this is a tribute to the Mexican Mafia, a Californian prison gang. It's also said to come from the initiation of members, in which they are savagely beaten for 13 seconds, known as being jumped in. Number 68. As such, the number 13 is very important in the symbolism of MS-13. Members often have tattoos that symbolize the number 13 in some way. One common example is having tattoos that feature the numbers 6 and 7, which, if you take a moment to really think about it, do in fact add up to 13. Mind blown. Number 69. I feel weird doing this for this one. Although gang tattoos are a large part of the culture of many gangs, MS-13 has begun to phase them out, especially the highly conspicuous face tattoos. This is partly due to the obvious reality that it makes them very easy to identify, but it also stems from a feeling that the group has moved beyond crude gang tactics as an organisation. Number 70. As such, large numbers of MS-13 gang members were deported in the early 90s in an attempt to weaken their influence on the area. 
However, upon returning to their home countries, many deportees continued operating for MS-13, internationalizing the gang and resulting in approximately 100,000 members worldwide, making them one of the largest, deadliest gangs on Earth. Number 71 not only that, but according to the Washington Times, MS-13 is even been linked to the international terrorist organization Al-Qaeda. In 2004, a top Al-Qaeda leader by the name of Adnan Shukrajuma was seen meeting with high-ranking MS-13 members in Honduras to seek help infiltrating the United States via Mexico. As such, the Salvadoran government designated MS-13 a terrorist group in their own right in 2015. Number 72 Another mainly Latino and Spanish-speaking gang are the Latin Kings, though the group's full name is the Almighty Latin King and Queen Nation. Experts said the gang has 35,000 members across the US, with about a third of them in the Midwestern state of Illinois. Number 73 Members of the Latin Kings are frequently given nicknames known as King or Queen names, and the group's typical gang sign features an outstretched thumb and index finger as well as little fingers with the two middle fingers held down, roughly forming the shape of a crown. Number 74 after legendary Latino pop star Selena was murdered by registered nurse Yolanda Saldiva, gang members in Texas attempted to raise $500,000 for Saldivar's bond, just so that they could kill her themselves once she was released. Not only that, but the Mexican Mafia reportedly placed a price on Saldivar's head and declared that anyone who killed her would be a hero. Number 75 The white supremacist Aryan Brotherhood, both a prison gang and an organized crime syndicate, make up less than a tenth of 1% of people incarcerated in American prisons, but are responsible for almost 20% of prison murders. Number 76 Bizarrely, the Aryan Brotherhood has a required reading list for those wanting to join. It includes titles such as The Will to Power by Nietzsche, The Prince by Machiavelli, To Kill a Mocking but no, I'm just joking, and even The Art of War by Chinese military leader Sun Tzu, which is odd considering the fact that Sun Tzu, being Chinese and all, wasn't white. Number 77 Then there are outlaw motorcycle gangs, hilariously abbreviated to OMGs. These groups formed after the Second World War, emphasizing freedom and nonconformity as a way of life, somewhat ironically while part of a hierarchical gang that demands strict group loyalty. Naturally, however, for some factions this has devolved into criminal activity, usually in the form of drug trafficking, theft and extortion, as well as violent crimes like assault and murder. Must emphasize this though, not all of them. Number 78 the apparent big four outlaw motorcycle gangs are the Hells Angels, Bandidos, Outlaws, and Pagans. The oldest of these, though no longer the largest, are the Hells Angels, which has existed for roughly 70 years. Number 79 One of the most bizarre customs of the Hells Angels OMG is the initiation. Apparently, in some chapters of the gang, newbies are baptized by having a bucket full of urine and feces poured over the top of them while wearing a brand new denim jacket. Even worse is that they're not even allowed to wash their freshly soiled attire, ever. Number 80 In the 1990s, large regions of Scandinavia hosted an unusually violent gang war between the Hells Angels and Bandidos in a dispute over, yep, you guessed it, drugs. Known as the Great Nordic Biker War, gang members using stolen military-grade weapons such as grenades and even anti-tank rocket launchers attacked each other's clubhouses and bars. By the time the dust had settled, 11 people had been killed and dozens more were wounded. Number 81 Interestingly, the Hells Angels are also somewhat litigious, having pursued legal action for trademark infringement against a number of brands such as Toys R Us, Amazon, and even Marvel Comics. The group even sued the Disney Corporation over the terrible comedy film Wild Hog starring John Travolta. Don't watch it, it's awful. The suit was eventually dropped when Disney agreed to remove all offending content. Number 82 a number of outlaw motorcycle gangs, such as the Hells Angels, Bandidos, and Mongols, refer to themselves as one percenters, owing to a comment supposedly made by the American Motorcyclist Association that 99% of all motorcycle riders were all good citizens, prompting the bad boys in these gangs to proudly boast that they were the one percent who weren't. That being said, the AMA themselves have claimed they have no record of making such a statement. Number 83. While the US Department of Justice considers Hells Angels to be an organized crime syndicate, they assert that they're nothing of the sort, saying they are just motorcycle enthusiasts who ride together and organize social events. Number 84 It should be ham and home, though, that not all bikers are gangs or bad. There is in fact a biker association known as Bikers Against Child Abuse, or BACA for short, who accompany child victims of abuse to court, and even in the courtroom, in order to help them feel safer while giving evidence. Number 85 Sadly, graffiti used by Crips, Bloods, Latin Kings, Aryan Nations, and the Ku Klux Klan have been found in Iraq, leading to the disturbing conclusion that many of the most powerful gangs in the United States have a presence in the American military. Number 86 As you may have noticed, a number of gangs tend to organize along racial and ethnic lines, but not all criminal groups are so closed-minded. There's a Canadian street gang, for instance, that's known specifically to encourage ethnic diversity. 
their name, the United Nations. Number 87. Gangs can have more than the official police to worry about too. For instance, the Salvadoran group Sombra Negra, Spanish for Black Shadow, is allegedly composed mostly of police and military personnel. Sombra Negra essentially operates as a death squad, targeting criminals and gang members as vigilantes. Number 88. Many tattoo parlors in areas heavily afflicted by the influence of gangs offer discounted or even free tattoo removal services for former gang members, who might want to remove such obvious symbols of their violent past. In fact, entire charities have been set up to provide this service, which makes it easier for ex-gang members to find jobs and apartments, giving them a better shot at a law-abiding future. Number 89. In order to be as authentic as possible, the movie Training Day was filmed in some of the most dangerous gang-infested neighborhoods in Los Angeles. In fact, almost all the gang members in the movie were actual Los Angeles gang members. Number 90. A similar situation happened during the filming of the music video for Michael Jackson's hit song, Beat It. Many of the video's extras were members of the Bloods and Crips, which in retrospect was probably a terrible idea. On the first day of shooting, things got so tense between the members of the warring factions that all the scenes featuring the gang members had to be shot that day so as to not prolong their time together. Mmm. Number 91. When Viggo Mortensen was shooting the movie East and Promises, he was required to be covered in a number of Russian mafia tattoos. The fake ink was so realistic that when he walked into a Russian diner in London, the entire room fell completely silent out of fear. Apparently no one recognised that Aragorn had just walked into their bar. Number 92. Since 1995, six presidents of the Bulgarian football team, Lokomotiv Plovdiv, have been assassinated by the Bulgarian Mafia. God, every country seems to have a Mafia, don't they? Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Just don't become a football president in Bulgaria, okay? Okay. Number 93. During the 1970s, the American city of Detroit was terrorised by a murderous gang known as the Errol Flynns. The group members were known for dressing flamboyantly, as even utilising a special dance as a gang sign, which eventually became a dance in its own right. Number 94. For a period during the 80s, New York City was terrorized by an apparently quite nerdy gang who dubbed themselves the Decepticons. They even used code names like Megatron and Soundwave, and even referred to the New York borough of Brooklyn as Cybertron. Number 95. In the early 90s, there was a gangster by the name of Robert Sandifer, nicknamed Yummy owing to his love of cookies. He carried out various criminal acts such as arson, murder, and armed robbery, but he was later executed by fellow gang members for fear he might become an informant to the police. Yummy was 11 years old. Number 96. The Pink Panthers are a gang of Serbian jewel thieves who, since 1999, have been known for successfully pulling off a number of glamorous Mission Impossible style heists across several continents, with one criminologist referring to their escapades as artistry. Over the course of their history, the group has successfully stolen an estimated $500 million worth of jewelry across 370 heists, and are even rumored to have been behind the high profile robbery of Kim Kardashian. Number 97. In the early 2000s, a group of gangsters in the frigid Russian region of Siberia filmed a seven-part TV series depicting their lives. Everything they filmed was completely real, including criminal acts, shootouts, and blood. The series was obviously a massive hit, much to the annoyance of the police. Number 98. For several years, since 2006, a gang of French thieves known as the Vacuum Gang managed to steal 600,000 euros by sucking bills out of the supermarket safes using a vacuum. Employees would funnel envelopes of money into safes using pneumatic suction tubes, into which the thieves simply drilled holes before sucking out the cash with a powerful vacuum. Voila! Number 99. In 2011, a gang member by the name of Anthony Garcia was arrested in California for driving with an expired license. The attending police happened to notice an elaborate tattoo on Garcia's chest, which depicted in great detail a liquor store robbery and murder that was eerily similar to a real case that had remained unsolved since 2004. Garcia, who is a member of the Rivera 13 gang, was taken in for questioning and eventually confessed, both to the crime he'd meticulously recreated on a chest tattoo, and for being so stupid he thought it was a good idea to meticulously recreate a crime he committed on a chest tattoo. No. In 2013, a 45-year-old deaf man in North Carolina was repeatedly stabbed in a vicious attack after a gang member saw him walking down the street with his friend using sign language to chat. The idiot's gang member thought the motions he was making with his hands were gang signs. Thankfully, the deaf man escaped with his life. Number 101. Students in Denver, Colorado are banned from wearing jerseys with certain numbers on them due to their association with local gangs. The numbers 13, 14, 31, 41 and 81 are all forbidden, as well as the famous number 18 jersey worn by American football player Peyton Manning. So that was 101 facts about gangs. I hope you learned something and aren't too terrified of, you know, everything outside now. What do you want to see on 101 facts next? Let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, here's two videos for you to check out right now. Think of it as part of your initiation ceremony. Huh. And subscribe if you haven't already. That's probably a 
Veteran Association Ceremony. Anyway, goodbye.